Hello, my dear Baiju's champions. Welcome to your own channel, Baiju's 6th, 7th, and 8th. As you know, we are done with Heath chapter. You have learned all the concepts, and I'm sure the last session, surviving the coldest places on earth, you have understood that as well, right? So this was quite an important chapter, and there were there were quite a few concepts also. But you know what? I understand when you learn so many concepts, they tend to get jumbled in your head, no? That's that's one thing which I have observed in many of the students, and that's why this session becomes really really important. It's a mind map session, right? So, what I'm going to do in this session is I'm going to create a structure of concepts in this chapter in your head, right? So that you can just organize your learnings properly. It's a nice flow chart, and by the way, you'll get the description uh, in the description. You'll get a PDF of the mind map as well. So don't worry. Don't worry about noting down everything. But my first point would be think and understand how to create this learning curve, how to create this branching, the flow chart, the mind map in your head. All right. So that's the agenda for today's session, and I hope you understand everything. Fine. So organize your thoughts, organize your concepts. Before organizing, I would say just at least collate everything, create a bunch. And will then you know arrange them properly in this session. Fine, deal, nice. Let's start with how to learn or how to structureize the concepts of heat. Let's create a mind map. This mind map would be creating itself, which means the way you should learn, the same way this mind map will get created. All right, come on, let's start. We started with. Heat. The chapter's name is heat, right? So let's start. What is the first thing we learn about? We learn about temperature, right? We said, okay, heat is something is fine. The sense of touch is not like the best judge of uh, things. Is it something hot? Is it something cold? And we even did an activity on that, right? And I'm sure a lot of you also did that at your home, which you told me, by the way, right? So that's why I'm thinking. Heat is something which you know. You also understand sense of touch is not the best judge. That's why we needed something more concrete, right? Something which gives you an idea. Oh, this is hot and this is cold. That quantity that was temperature. It was the measure of degree of hotness or coldness of a body, right? A value which tells you, oof, more temperature you are hot, less temperature you are cold. Simple, right? All right. So after temperature, we went towards. What devices do we use to measure temperature, right? Once you understand what quantity you want, right, then you have to see what devices will tell you that quantity, right? So that's why the devices were there were two thermometers we learned. One was a laboratory thermometer. Important thing was its range is minus ten degrees Celsius to one hundred and ten degrees Celsius, right? And one was a clinical thermometer, thirty-five degrees Celsius to forty-two degrees Celsius, right? So. These two thermometers we have already learned, and by the way, if you had missed that session, the link of that session will also be in the description below. Fine, okay. Now, in clinical and laboratory, can someone can someone think what was the biggest difference? I mean, apart from range, which is already visible over here. Remember the kink, right? There was a kink in a clinical thermometer. The reason was. How do you use thermometer? The clinical thermometer. You measure your temperature, keeping it under your tongue. Then you take it out. You watch. You take this whole time in in, in between, and that's why we don't want the mercury level to fall. And that's why there is a kink. It does not let the mercury fall instantly. That's why you have to shake it before using. You have to shake the thermometer, right, to bring the level down. Fine. Got this. We have discussed all these things, by the way, right? I hope you remember. Nice. So we discussed about clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer. Difference was kink and the range. Fine, okay, yes. Next, we thought or we talked about the transfer of heat. What is heat transfer? Right, a body can gain heat from surroundings or from other bodies, or it can lose heat to surroundings or to other bodies. Right, so which means heat transfer becomes important. Right, heat transfer. So let's discuss. The, we discussed about the modes of heat transfer, right? We discussed about one of the mode was conduction, heat transfer due to vibration of particles. Now this thing I have explained in very detail in in one of our sessions. It's because of vibration. 
particles gain more and more heat and it's the primary mode of uh, heat transfer in solids remember in solids molecules are tightly packed they vibrate the moment they gain more heat energy they vibrate vigorously and what they do is in in doing so vibration right this kind of vibration what they do is they strike each other so i would say you remember this this just me doing this dance like this right the more heat they gain the more they start pushing the next one this is what conduction simple right because of vibration of particles all right primary mode in solids okay next is convection next was convection primary mode in fluids liquids or gases but i am saying collectively fluids okay fine heat transfer by the actual movement of particles i think you remember right in in liquids or gases what happens what happens heat is given let's say you are boiling water in a pan you boil from the bottom right so hot water rises and the cold water comes down to take its place it gains heat rises so this is convection currents forming up fine so that's why this is convection primary mode of heat transfer in fluids liquids or gases right and one of the difference in conduction convection very important difference is the movement of matter which means see in solids particles were vibrating they were just pushing each other but in convection the particles are actually moving right they change their place and next one comes at the bottom so that's why in convection actual movement of particles happen that is another important uh, point to at least remember about fine okay so conduction convection there was one more mode of heat transfer what was it i can't remember can you you can right i also remember i'm just acting over here right so that's why third mode was radiation it does not require a medium and whenever you forget radiation just think sun is very far from us in between this is whole space empty space it's vacuum and then you reach earth still you feel warmth from sun rays why because it's radiation the rays coming from sun are coming to you and this is what radiation so radiation does not require a medium very important thing conduction particles vibrating convection matter or atoms uh, moving radiation no medium required i'll transfer heat as it is not a problem fine so that's radiation so we discussed about three modes of heat transfer all right then we said in conduction <coughs> sorry in conduction we have two types of materials conductors and insulators conductor as the name gives an idea conductor means they do conduction they allow heat to pass through them insulator insulation means they don't allow heat to pass through them right they allow heat to pass through it insulator does not allow heat to pass through it fine okay then in convection we had two phenomena two very important phenomena right sea breeze and land breeze sea breeze happens i mean i i understand you can see the the uh, the picture over here it's day time during sea breeze and night time during land breeze but you remember right whatever gains more heat loses more heat as well with radiation so <clears throat> land and sea during day time they get equal amount of rays from the sun right we can assume at least that much but land heats up faster compared to sea so in the day time land is hotter sea is cooler comparatively so the air above land gets hot and hot air rises up we understand this right density decreases with with, with temperature with more heat energy right so air above land rises because it becomes hot and the cold air from the sea comes towards land this is the this is sea breeze you are thinking and that hot breeze that hot uh, air above land rises up goes like this above sea to cool down so this is a current formed right this is what we call as a sea breeze opposite happens at night at night sea is warmer compared to the land why because i told you whoever gains more heat in the day no they lose more heat at night land says okay okay go 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 all the heat you just give off you radiate so it cools down faster compared to sea sea takes time to gain heat and takes time to lose heat so that's why at night land is cooler compared to sea means air above sea is warmer now air above sea rises up and cold air from land goes towards sea this is the sea breeze right so that's why coastal areas always get these sea breeze and land breeze and that's why you feel good at least at the coast right so that's why this is sea breeze land breeze someone asks you can you tell me good phenomena of convection you can just simply say land breeze and sea breeze that's it right i can explain them also fine radiation radiation and color 
see radiation is all about light or those rays electromagnetic waves i won't use this term because you have used it once that's why i'm just using it it's all about how much rays you can absorb to so color dependency is there means white and black i'm taking two extremes lighter or darker colors also can be used but i'm saying two extremes white black or lighter colors or darker colors darker colors why they are dark because they absorb they are absorbing more and more light and reflecting less and less light means they are absorbing more and more energy the more light you absorb means more energy you are absorbing means you are gaining more heat right and white reflects more light color reflects more means they don't absorb that much light means they don't absorb that much energy they are reflecting more of it that's why in summers we wear light clothes in the day and winters we tend to wear darker clothes so that we can just absorb more sun rays and you know get warmth fine that's why color dependency there in radiation fine okay okay next conductors and insulators seasonal clothing and on this particular thing we have done a complete session remember nice the yakutsk yakutia right siberia russia Right, right. You remember that. I'm sure. I'm sure. I remember that. And if you don't remember that, don't worry. All these session links are there in the description. And this mind map PDF is also there in the description. Don't worry about that. Fine. Go ahead. Download it. Check it out. You want? Take a print out and just go through it. Have a look. Create a structure in your head. Right. So seasonal clothing in summer we wear cotton clothes. Why? Because they are thin. Right. And in winter we wear woolen clothes. Woolen because woolen because remember. puffy material woolen clothes wool is a puffy material it has all those air packets in between so much space so air gets filled in and air is a bad conductor right it's a bad conductor of heat so your body heat cannot go outside these woolen clothes those air packets in woolen clothes they are insulating your body heat from going out that's why it helps you to conserve your body heat fine so that's why seasonal clothing heat and fashion we call it right so that's why This is how you have to learn this chapter, right? From heat, think of temperature. From temperature, think of the devices, laboratory and clinical. Then heat, think of transfer of heat. Then think of the modes of transfer of heat. Then think of conduction may materials, conductor insulator, right? Then from conductor insulator, think of different clothings. Convection, think of phenomena, sea breeze and land breeze, and radiation, think of dependency with color. That's how my suggestion is. you take a structure of this chapter in your head you know what and you will never forget you would know what to revise what not to revise what are different chunks what different parts of a chapter and that's how this will help you out fine okay with this said i can say we at byjuice we have got you covered and we are trying to get you covered right so there is a trial class in the description enjoy it it's free try it see how it works right and Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Don't worry. We'll do everything in our might to help you out, right? You know that. I'm pretty sure you know that, right? So, thank you for joining and I'll see you in the next session.